What's up guys, got another video re review for you. This time we're taking a look at G1 Chrome Dome. So this guy was released in like 87 and he is a Headmaster. Now for those of you who don't know, the Headmasters uh, and the Target Masters and the Power Masters were kind of Hasbro's last little gimmick. Um, these guys didn't have a head and they have a separate guy that turns into a head. I'll show you that in a minute. If you, I'm sure most of you know what a headmaster is, but just for those of you who don't. So Chrome Dome is a car in the loosest sense of the word. I mean, he does resemble a car, but he's more of a 80s, you know, car, you know, super sports car, you know, super speedy, weird car thing. Um, wouldn't be very practical having all these things hanging off the sides and guns on the top and everything else, but whatever. It was the 80s. We were crazy like that. So he is very simple. He's a very simple transformation. Obviously, you see he rolls very well. So let's take a look in his cockpit. We just pop these guns off real quick. You can't get the cockpit open without uh, taking the guns off because they block it. Lift the cockpit open. And here we have his little headmaster buddy, Stylor. That's a horrible, horrible name. So we'll take a look at him real quick. So what's weird is the US headmasters and the Japanese headmasters are completely different story-wise. Uh, and the US headmasters, uh, basically what happened was there's a planet uh, called Nebul Nebulos. Um, and the, the inhabitants of the planet decided to put on exosuits and become the heads of a few uh, Autobots and Decepticons. The Autobots got vehicles and the Decepticons actually had a, had um, animals. The Weird Wolf, Mindwipe, Skullcruncher. So they actually were just dudes wearing suits and when they turned into a head they would just fold it up on, a ro on another robot and they would kind of work together. In the Japanese series, in Japanese Headmasters, these guys were the actual people. So what happened was, Cybertronians evolved differently. Some Cybertronians are, I don't even know if they said were Cybertronian. They might not have even been Cybertronian. But they were, they evolved themselves into the ability to, to transform into a head. And they built the body. This guy was just a body. For this guy, these were called Transtectors. So basically... This was just a vehicle to drive this guy, which I think is cool. It's you know it's a unique thing where it's totally different from the, you know the American version. So again, the American version, this was a separate this was a, a separate alien, and this was a Cybertronian, and they just kind of worked together. And then Japanese, this guy was the actual being, and whoops, this guy was just a vehicle for him. So it's you know it's just it's just a different thing. It's really cool that you know it's different. I dig that. But to transform him into a head, you just fold him in half, and you lift the crown up, and there's the head. But we'll take a look at that in a minute when we plug him in. So let's. So like in Japanese, this guy wasn't style or this guy was Chrome Dome, and this guy was just a shell. It was just it was just called a Transtector. They were all Transtectors. So like when they swapped heads, it didn't matter because this was the being. So it was a, you know it's a unique idea. I think it's pretty cool. And it's different. So this guy transforms very simply. We just kind of lift these out of the way. It doesn't really matter which way you move them. Um, they just peg on right there. And so and they, they don't really peg. They just kind of sit. And then you just fold them in half thusly. Come under here. Flip the feet. He does have really cool chrome, gold chrome rims, which is kind of weird, but fold the legs forward. Come in. I don't know if I can get them all in frame, but we'll do our best here. Take the canopy and just fold it along his back. He does have a gigantic backpack. And there we have Chrome Dome in robot mode. That, that's it. And then for his head, 
can do is fold this down. You don't have to fold that down, but you'll see why you want to fold it down. And then you yell, head on! And you plug his head into the top, and you get his tech specs. So you can see. We'll focus, there we go. His speed and strength is about a five, his intelligence is about a seven or eight. So that's pretty cool. These are actually, what's cool is these are actually on springs. And I, don't, I didn't bring another head to show you, but when you pop the head off and you put somebody else in, it would actually change because basically these, these little nubs right here control how far you push the springs in. And then, so if you put somebody else's head on there, their tech specs would show up. So that's, it's actually a pretty neat gimmick. Especially for for the time. So we can just go ahead and pop in his guns. Now for the fun part, the articulation. God, why do I even bother on G1 toys to show articulation? Let me try to get him in frame a little bit better. Bring him down here a little bit. Chop it off his head. I'm gonna either chop off his head or chop off his feet. Chop off his feet. Head, absolutely nothing because of the gimmick. Arms are on this ratchet that go all the way around. He has no wrists. His feet are, his hands are just molded into the side of the car mode. Um, nothing at the hips. Nothing at the nothing at the waist. I'm sorry. Nothing at the hips. Nothing at the knees. No swivel. Cut. Oop, oop. You got some foot pivot from the transformation, and that's it. Take a look at it from the back. There's his backpack. It's not the greatest backpack. It's not. It's not too horrible because you're gonna look at it from the front anyway. Let's take a look at his guns. They just you know, regular laser blasters. So yeah, let's take a look. You can look at his his cool guy face. It's pretty similar to how it looks in the show. Either show. It's the same character on either show, basically. They just picked off where G1 left off and changed some things. Uh, the Headmaster series, that is. I do have most of these guys, actually. Uh, I have him, I have Highbrow, I have... Um, Crud. Can't think of their other names. Oh, I gotta get Hardhead. That's who I need. He's probably next on my list. I just got him, Skull Cruncher, and Dreadwing, which is a Power Master. Um, but Highbrow, Hardhead, Chrome Dome, and I cannot, for the life of me, see, I'm putting myself on the spot, and I can't think of the other guy's name. Uh, he's a plane. He's a woo plane. Highbrow is a double-bladed helicopter. I can't think of his name right now. Sorry, I'm pretty sure I have him, but the name escapes me. So yeah, I dig this guy. Um, they are expensive. They're G1. They're 30-year-old toys. 25-year-old toys. Um, if you can get your hands on this guy and you're a G1 guy, I say get him, especially if you like the Headmaster's gimmick and if you watch the show. Um, he's basically the leader kind of, of the Headmasters, but I really, like I said, I really think it's a cool gimmick that, or a cool idea that in the, sh in the Japanese version, this guy's a shell and this guy is the actual guy, the actual intelligence, whereas in G1, Chrome Dome was a dude, and then his head was a dude. So it's kind of, you know, it's cool that's different, and you can watch both and get both both views. I personally, I think I think I like the, the Japanese idea a little bit better, I think it's a little bit of a cooler idea. Oh, let me, I got this guy right here, so here he is with Grind Rod, as you can see, quite a bit taller, as the G1 was talking about, so there is basically just no scale. Here he is with uh, Hearts of Steel Thundercracker. He's even bigger than this guy, but he's a Burke. So yeah. 
And if you haven't figured it out yet, there's a reason why I'm doing him now. And you'll see why in a few days. So yeah, this has been the video review for Transformers Generation 1 Headmaster Chrome Dome.